So today we're shooting the scene which is the wedding of uh, Marie Antoinette and Miss Louis XVI. There's huge pressure on Louis and Marie Antoinette because Louis is like Alex. He doesn't know what to do with her. Very intimidated. It's quite impressive with them getting the light look. Well, now they turned the light off, <laughs> but in the series you'll see how impressive the lighting has been. For me, their relationship is the most important element of this series and is a very powerful portrayal of marriage because they went from being two young people who couldn't speak to one another to being each other's greatest allies. Ça raconte comment elle va trouver une connexion avec Louis XVI, donc qu'elle connaissait pas. Et c'est vrai que le début a été un peu compliqué. <rire> Ultimately, Louis the 16th is her friend, but to begin with, he is her first enemy. I feel nothing. Marie Antoinette is quickly very disappointed by her husband, Louis. He was very shy and wouldn't speak to her for almost three, three episodes. What surprised me about Louis is the transformation he goes through. So when we first meet Louis, he is a child still, really. Louis lives in a world of his own. Louis famously was a big nature lover. He loves his horses and loves hunting. He's very, very quiet and he's very fearful. Dans les situations non officielles, il était comme, comme il aurait aimé être peut-être en jogging aujourd'hui, le plus à l'aise possible et le plus adéquat par rapport aux activités qu'il aimait euh, pratiquer. On le voit dans sa forge, on le voit en train de bricoler, voilà, avec toujours des gilets assez raffinés, mais pas toujours brodés, dans des brins, dans des grilles. Euh. Bon, il y a cette partie-là qu'on a essayé de montrer aussi, euh, ce côté plus rustique, plus confortable par rapport à l'étiquette au protocole et il commence à être obligé d'être présentable et présenté comme tel à partir du moment où il devient roi. Would it be too much for you to admit that father was wrong about me? You know he was right. Brother. He was never really supposed to be king. His older brother was supposed to be king. The Comte de Provence who is my brother. Uh, he is everything that Louis should be. He is the better looking brother. He is the stronger brother. He speaks, Louis does not. Um, <laughs> he's everything that a good king would be. Um, and he really wants to be the king as well. He's jealous of Louis's position. You know, I shan't waste a moment delivering the air. Brother. In reality, it would probably be much better for everyone if they just switched, but that's not how history happens, so... <laughs> so he's in a situation where he is not ready for anything. I'm not ready to be a father. Well, I think this is where you see the shift from a young boy and a young girl not wanting to have much to do with one another and Louis refusing to do his duty, which he was required to do, which was to consummate his marriage, because he, more than anyone at Versailles, resented being married off, he was only 15 and a half and he didn't want to get married. And in his own way, he was just as much of a rebel as she was. You know, their marriage kicks off very, very, very slowly. Can't hold out forever. Can't he? It's been four months. The big issue of the first seven, eight years of their relationship is their sexual relations, which were non-existent. When are you going to unbutton your breeches and screw your wife? There's a lot of theories about this and um, about why they didn't have sex for the first eight years of their marriage. Some people think it was medical issues. Um, some people think it was just no attraction. There is nothing wrong with my grandson. After doing the research and after thinking about it a lot, I think it's just it's a 15-year-old boy who's terrified. Sex in their case was nothing 
fun, it was duty, it was duty. It was connected with so much tension and pressure, so of course they ran away from it. He has a room full of people when they get married who are watching. It's normal that they don't want to have sex. I think he associates sex with, you know, terror, really. You know, nobody told them about being intimate with each other. They didn't know anything about sex. Is that right? No. I don't think so. Both of them, they did get friends at some point, but it was very, very difficult for them to create, to establish a, a normal, healthy marriage. I think she is not suited to life at Versailles. Louis is this character born in a society where men will just get what they want, and especially a king. He's been raised to have the idea that whatever he wants goes, and a wife is there to support him. Deborah shows this side of Louis that is completely misunderstanding of women. He does not understand the importance they play, the intelligence and vibrance that Marie Antoinette brings to this court, and how she is the one who is changing it from the inside for the better. Pour Marie Antoinette, c'est un peu particulier parce que sa mère était très amoureuse de son mari. Donc elle avait aussi un, une vision du couple un peu différente, je pense. Louis will guide you. Let your father guide me. Papa was gentle. But firm. Ma! They have, you know, grown a little bit closer. I think at the very beginning, it's, it's really about physical touch. So three actually were she's learning to rise, and Louis comes along and adjusts her seat. And it's this tiny little moment, but this bolt of electricity flies through them. It's the first moment they have proper touch that they are in control of. They haven't been forced together for their wedding. They haven't been, you know, it's, it's them, and it's these two people that have a moment together. Amen. The moment the king dies, she feels sad. She knows how much Louis the 15th meant to her husband Louis the 16th but she's also terrified because it means that she will be queen of France but luckily she can enter this new chapter of her life with a sense of togetherness with her husband Louis I can't do this we will do it together in episode six Marie Antoinette's brother Joseph comes along and gives us a kind of marriage counseling session a prostitute why not? The husband does not stray if he loves his wife. And suddenly he admits that he truly does love his wife, and I think she doesn't really realize that because he hasn't expressed it. So you do love me? But then throughout the series, there's, it, there's lots of ups, ups and downs in this season between them. It takes them seven years <laughs> to create an heir. May I visit you this evening? And by the end, although their marriage isn't consummated, he accepts that she is his friend and that they must forge an alliance together to get through it because it's just too much for both of them. And that's when they cement their friendship. And I think helps him find himself. He becomes this intellectual, sharp, quick, and strong character by the end when, he, when he's the king. She wouldn't leave him, and she was always there for him right until the end. She could have escaped, but she chose not to. 